Hello there. Today we're going to be discussing relocation with prime numbers. Now I suspect you're sick and tired of prime numbers at this point because we've discussed them so many times. Um, but they're also very useful for relocation. And I would like to show you uh, exactly how they come in handy and when it's appropriate uh, to go ahead and use these for that purpose. Okay, let's get started. So uh, I wanted to begin by talking about the prime numbers life hack. Um, so what do I mean by this? Basically, uh, prime numbers are numbers that are, of course, only divisible by two things, by one uh, and themselves. And sometimes the best way to solve a problem that isn't really intuitive uh, when you're trying to relocate um, is to really just go ham, uh, use brute force, and um, break it down into its individual prime factors in the case of multiplication and in the case of division. Now, I will show you on the next slide how all this works. Uh, but for now, the general procedure, um, first of all, actually it's to solve this question without using this technique. So if you do recognize another uh, factor that works in this case as well, definitely go for that instead. Um, only use this technique as a stopgap, just in case uh, no other technique really seems correct. Um, and of course, the, the meat here is step number two right there, which is to break the number up into its constituent prime factors. Um, if you happen to be multiplying at that time, continue multiplying. Uh, again, I know this is a bit confusing, but I will show you exactly what this looks like in a second. Uh, if you are dividing, continue dividing as well. Um, and of course, step three is to cancel out wherever necessary. Okay, um, I've added a note here to remember to prime factor mentally, but of course you can use a calculator when needed. Okay, um, so I did say I was going to show you how to do this, and that's not wrong. We will by the end of this video. But before I do that, I would like you to actually take a stab at some of these questions. So I've got two questions here on the uh, the slide. Um, they do look fairly easy at first glance. So we've got 7 divided by 11 times 6 uh, divided by 14 times 5 times 33. And the second question is 17 divided by 51 times 6 divided by 2. But you will very quickly realize that these questions are not what they seem. They are a little bit trickier in nature. So first of all, I would like you to try this, and then I will show you how to solve it using this general procedure. And if you like, you can try using this procedure right now and try and come up with that final answer for me. Okay? Um, so as always, I have given you a five-minute timer right there, and I will see you, and we will take it up once this is over. All right? Take care.
All right, so time is up. Let us now take this up here. Um, let's go with, why don't we go with the sky blue color here? Okay, um, so first things first, uh, for all these questions, the very first thing you have to do is always circle uh, the divisions. So let's go ahead and do that for question one here. We only have two. Um, so those that's, that's been taken care of. Now, it may not be immediately obvious to you what to do next. Well, maybe one step is. So we do see we have a divide by 11 here. There is one number directly which is divisible by 11, which is this 33 right here. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. Uh, so this gives us 33 divided by 11, right? Um, I didn't really check for the lowest running total in this case, but... Really, 33 is going to be the only number divisible by 11. Um, so there's going to be no better candidate to keep our lowest running total even lower. Um, so I would just at this point give them both a check mark. But at this point, it may not be intuitive as to how to approach this, right? No number there is really divisible by 14, um, even though 14 itself is divisible into 2 and 7. Um, we have a 7, but then what are you supposed to do with the 2, right? So... At this point, it becomes a bit less intuitive what exactly to do next. So here's what I do, right? Uh, at this point, a number like divide by 14 for me um, really needs to be broken down more. So what I would do is I would simply rewrite the question, but break down uh, the divide by 14 and then use it that way, right? So this divide by 14 here, maybe I'll use a different color just to point that out right here. Let's break this up. So we know 14's prime factors are 2 and 7. Uh, you can quickly do that mentally, and if you you can also check with a calculator if you'd like. Um, so we'd put just make it divide by 2, divide by 7, right? Um, now at this point, um, you can simply proceed by pretty much rewriting the rest of the question as it is. So um, don't modify it yet. We'll get to that. Um, but we're going to write the 7, the 6, and the 5 just as they are. So now I just write multiply by 7, multiply by 6, and multiply by 5. And again, we're not changing the question. All of these numbers were in the original question. What we're changing is we're changing the way that we wrote that question to then make it easier to apply relocation later on. And eventually you'll get so good at this that you won't have to have this middle step at all. You will be able to pick it up automatically. But in this case, I do want to have an extra middle step just so we have that mental regurgitation started. OK, um, and at this point, you just attempt this like a normal relocation question, right? So 33 divided by 11. Let's just keep that the same for now. That doesn't really change. Um, but at this point, we want to keep our running total as low as possible. So at this point, I would use the time seven and divide by seven that are present right there that I've indicated in the blue color. So multiply by seven, divide by seven. And again, this doesn't do anything. Um, you can check off the seven over here. But don't check off the 14 just yet because there's an extra divide by 2 sitting there for us to use. Um, at this point, to be honest, you don't really have that much choice um, in terms of keeping the lowest running total because, uh, um, again, we have a, a 2 there. Um, and then really, in my opinion, there's just a 6 divide by 2 that'll work in this case. Um, let's go ahead and apply it anyway. So let's multiply it by 6, divide by 2. And at this point, from the original uh, 14, which was in the green color, which we made this 2 and this 7. So here, let me remove the blue color just to show you, right? This divide by 2 divided by 7 ended up being this divide by 2 here and this divide by 7 here. Perfectly fine. The whole point was this to re well, the whole point of this was to relocate anyway. Um, but the point now being is that we can actually check off the divide by 14 because it's used up. And the 6 is, of course, used up right here. So we can check that off as well. I'm going to switch back to the blue color to avoid confusing you. Right. Um, the five is not used, but you know what? There's honestly no way to reduce our lowest running total in this case anyway. So just tack on the times five at the end. OK, um, now you can actually go ahead and relocate from left to right. So 33 divided by uh, 11 is equal to three. Um, so we're here now. Uh, these two steps don't do anything. So we're still at the three. Uh, times 6 divided by 2 is still times 3, uh, and in this case, 3 times 3 equals to 9. Um, so if you want to write the baby calculations, you can, right? Um, get in the habit now of not having to do this every time, but if you want that regurgitation, it's always there. 
And then as you calculate the final answer, you get 9 times 5, which is equal to 45. So your final answer in this case is equal to 45. Okay? Um, and so remember, eventually you'll come across situations where the step in this line and the step in this line uh, should become uh, relatively intuitive. Right? But we're not really at that stage yet. So at this stage, you can continue to think of it as a process, but remember that those things eventually do need to be done in your head. You should only be showing your major steps uh, as showing your work. So there you go. That's the answer. Um, originally, if you just tried to do this question from left to right, 7 divided by 11, already that's some kind of whack decimal, and I don't even want to think about multiplying that by 6. So definitely the relocation property uh, can help make things more intuitive and more easier for you to digest, right? Uh, let's jump to question two here, um, which suffers from pretty much the same problem, right? Where we, we don't really know <laughs> really what to do. Um, so in this case, the major culprit is this divide by 51. So let's start off by immediately breaking that up. So let's go with the 17 again in the blue, right? So we have 17. Uh, and then instead of divide by 51, let's go ahead and prime factorize that. Uh, 51 is 17 times 3, so we're going to have divide by 17, divide by 3. Um, this is what I meant, by the way, on the previous slide when I said you, I want you to, uh, if you're dividing, keep dividing. If you're multiplying, keep multiplying. Uh, this is what I meant. So on, on this page here, when we're dividing, we're dividing by 51, you want to divide by 17 and divide by 3. That's how you break up that number. So that's what I meant there. Um, not too much more to really break up in this question now. Uh, just go ahead and multiply by 6 and divide by 2. Um, if it makes your life easier, go ahead. I did skip one component, which is to uh, circle all of the divisions. So you can go ahead and do that for me as well. Dude, that's a very bad circle. Let's do that again. Okay. Um, and then at this point, we can start to employ our whole lowest running total strategy. Um, again, some of these steps may become moot in the future, but for now, you can just write them as you see them. So 17 divided by 17, perfect way to start things off and keep a nice low lowest running total of zero. Um, and then we can multiply by 6, divide by 3, and divide by 2. And if you notice, this gives us a value of 1, because 17 divided by 17 is equal to 1. 6 divided by 3 divided by 2 is also 1, and 1 times 1 is, of course, 1. So your final answers for question 1 are 45, and question 2 is 17. Uh, sorry, is, is 1. So 45 and 1 are your final answers, okay? So this is what I meant when I said it was trickier than it seems. You do have to apply yourself a little bit, and sometimes you do have to use this prime factorization strategy to really bail you out when there's no obvious number to divide by and slowly you'll get better at this this will become second nature as well but for now it's really a matter of just doing this many times until you get the hang of it okay um so when we have twos and fives being multiplied only we do have a special case so whenever you get a two and a five um you end up with every two and every five gives you a zero in the tens digit now, if you don't believe me, we can actually do an exercise quickly to prove this to you. So, if you do 2 times 5 on your calculator, you'll get a value of 10. If you do uh, 2 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 2, this is 4 times 25, which gives you 100. Now, notice that this is two zeros, and we had two twos and two fives. So, if I do 2 to the power of 3 times 5 to the power of 3, which is actually 8 times 125, I get a value of 1,000. And again, no surprise, three zeros, and we had powers of 3. So that is where this logic here comes from, okay? And we're going to apply this logic when we prime factor and isolate all the groups of 2 and 5 and try and build off that, even when the multiplication isn't necessarily followed up by a division and looks complicated but isn't really complicated. So let's do a simple example first to sort of guide your thinking, and then I'm going to have you try some work on your own, and then we'll take it up at the end. So my simple example for you is on the screen now. It's 24 times 125. It's right here. 
okay? And how are we going to work through this? Well, first, we're going to try and prime factorize everything we see, okay? Uh, again, these prime factorization steps should be done mentally. Um, if you're not there yet, that's okay. Don't worry. So 24 is equal to 8 times 3. Um, 8 is 2 to the power of 3, as we saw right here. Um, so I will just write that in. So it's um, 3 times 2 to the power of 3. And we're multiplying here, of course, so we'll keep that going. Uh, 125 is actually equal to 5 to the power of 3, so we're just going to put times 5 to the power of 3, right? Now, you will notice that this part looks the same as this part, which means our answer is this part, right? So this gives us 3 times 1,000, which gives us an answer of 3,000, right? You would maybe think at this stage right here, oh, I need a calculator, oh, I need this and that other thing. But no, once you isolate your twos and fives, you can use this convenient asterisk shortcut uh, to sort of make your life easier and combine twos and fives in a way that limits how much you end up using your calculator. Um, remember, the idea is you should always be using uh, mental math as much as possible. So try your, whoops, try your best to be using, interesting, mental math right so that means avoid using a calculator and avoid using mathematical techniques that discourage um you know that that sort of rough work or whatever try and do this mentally and these techniques really assist with that okay so just like before i have now two questions for you to work through uh and we will take this up towards the end of the um uh of the five minutes good luck take it away
All right, so time is up, and let's take this up now. Um, so the first question is relatively easy, I hope you thought. Um, let's circle the division there. Um, again, you might be stumped. There's no, um, nothing here is divisible by 18, uh, but never fear. We do have some solutions um, to talk about. Um, you might have observed that um, 27 and 18 are both divisible by 9. At the same time, 8 and 625 are both powers of 2. So a good step here is to literally prime factor every number you see. Um, so let's do that quickly. So I have here 8, which is 2 cubed. Uh, 27 is uh, 3 to the power of 3. Uh, 625, you might remember that as 25 squared. That's actually 5 to the power of 4, right? Um, and of course, divide by 18. Um, the prime factorization for that is a bit awkward. It's divide by 2, divide by 3 squared, because technically 3 squared is 9, and 9 times 2 is 18. There's a bit of a hiccup there, but that's okay. Well, you can deal with that. All right. Um, let's simplify and cancel things out as best as we can. So in this case, um, we know that when, when we are dividing these things, we want to put them in the denominator. So we get 2 cubed times 3 cubed times 5 to the 4, divide by 2 times 3 squared. Um, so we have a situation where these guys pretty much cancel, right? Uh, and they leave a 2 squared in the numerator, right? Uh, let's put that over here, basically. And we also have a 3, uh, which also ends up in the numerator here, right? Um, and that's pretty much it. So basically, at the end of the day, we're getting 3 times 5 to the power of 4, uh, which you can either just do mentally, um, or you can quickly plug it into a calculator, 3 times 5 to the power of 4, and you get an answer of 1875. Okay, um, let's quickly check the math here. So this, we got 1875. But when I double checked using my calculator, I got an answer of 7,500. 7, so let's see what went, what, what went wrong here. Um, let's check. So 2 cubed times 3 cubed times 5 to the 4 divide by 2 divide by 9. That still gives us 7,500. So it looks like it's in the cancellation step. Um, 2 cubed times 3 cubed times 5 to the 4. Um, oh, I got it. Uh, I wrote the 2 squared up here, but I forgot about it over here. So it's actually going to be 2 squared times 3 times 5 to the 4. Okay, so that makes a lot more sense. Okay, so we've got here equals 2 squared times 3 times 5 to the 4, as expected, right? Nothing different here. 
Um, and then we can continue breaking this up into twos and fives. So this becomes two squared times three times five squared times five squared. Now, why do I break this up into times five squared times five squared? Because I know this is 100, right? Because it's four times 25. And then this, you can just do mentally, is 75. So we get 100 from here. We get 75 from here. If we multiply this, we do get the expected calculator value of 7,500. And this just goes to show, right? You need to always be checking your work with the calculator just in case you make a boo-boo like I did right there, okay? But hopefully that made sense. Uh, 2 squared times 5 squared, we know it's 100. I talked about that on the previous slide. Uh, 3 times 5 squared, you can do mentally, or you can just see it's 25 times 3. If I've got 3 quarters, I've got 75 cents, okay? And then you just multiply, and it's 7,500, okay? Um, that looks clear right now. However, I will erase all this because I'm going to need a whole bunch of space for question number 2. So let's go with the eraser and let's erase all of this. But I'll keep the, the final answer for you right there. So we'll keep the 7,500. Okay. Now question two is, you know, a complete mess. <laughs> it's a difficult question. Um, there's definitely no denying that. Um, but le le let's at least sort through what we can sort through, and then we'll just try and do whatever we can with the other numbers, right? Um, now, different things stand out to different people, right? To me, the first thing that stands out really um, is this 22 divided by 11 right here. Uh, I can once again, oops. Just give me one minute while I fix whatever it is this zoomed in view that's happening here. There we go. Looks like everything is back to normal. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that out. So we have 22 divided by 11. Uh, we can also circle that division if you'd like. No problem with that. Now, here it depends what stands out to you. To me, the next thing that stands out, and I'm going to put it in the green color here, is that 125 times 8. Why? Remember, 125, as we talked about on the previous slide, you can review it, is 5 cubed. 8 is also 5 cubed. Uh, sorry, 8 is 2 cubed. So that goes together, that forms a nice 1,000. Now, it's not a beautiful number, but you know what? It gets the job done for now. So, times 125 times 8. Right now, at this point, I would like to write a quick disclaimer here. In this, in this case, I would like to actually write. Oops, we're not done yet. We can check these off, um, and I will write a lowest running total here. Uh, we're actually going to go ahead and calculate this to be equal to two thousand. Right? Um, we can quickly check that. I know my math was not very reliable in the last question, so let's quickly check that. We do get two thousand on the actual calculator, so that is correct. Um, okay, so now we can try and worry about all the other stuff. Um, 2,000 is not yet divisible by 6, so we do need to multiply it by something that will allow us to divide by 6. Honestly, in this case, we can't really use any type of lowest running total deal because the next number that is divisible is already at the level of 21. So just go for it. Just do it at this point, right? So multiply by 21. Now, this gives us 21 is 7 times 3. If I divide by 6 right away, uh-oh. If I divide by 6 right away, right, let's think about what the lowest running total is. So we had 2,000, um, and then if we take the 2,000, we, had, we, we multiply by 3 from the 21, but we also divide by 3 from the 6, so that's cancelled. So we have a remaining times 7 from the 21, and we have a remaining divide by 2 uh, from the divide by 6, right? So at this point, we're going to stop ourselves and we're going to say, okay, if we have all these things going on, if we multiply this by 21, and then we immediately divide by 6 without holding back, our final value is going to be 
7,000, right? Um, so this is difficult to see, but again, the, 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 the times 21 here, the times 21 here is actually going to be a time 7. The divide by 6 is actually going to end up being a divide by 2. Um, because again, the 3s will just cancel out. And then 7 divided by 2, you can quickly do that mentally. Um, and if you multiply that by the original 2 that was there, because we already had 2,000, this 2 and this 2, if you divide them, it gives you 1,000. And then you factor in the 7, and that gives you the 7,000, right? So there's a bit of hopscotch you got to do mentally. But once you get there, you do get a value of 7,000, which in this case is a relatively good number to carry on with relocation, right? So we have used up the times 21. Uh, we've now used up the divide by 6. Honestly, there's no other way. Times 4, times 5. Luckily, we can easily do uh, 7,000 times 20. That gives us 140,000, right? So um, go ahead, definitely rewatch this part of the video um, where I, I go ahead and, and do all that. But yes, it's definitely 140,000. We can check using our calculator uh, four times one, four times 125 uh, times five times eight divide by six times 21 divide by 11 times 22. And I'm getting a value here of 140,000. There we go. All right. So that is that. And we are good to go for the next question. OK, so as long as you're willing to play a bit of mental gymnastics, you're going to be good to go for this question. OK, uh, I call this next question the big bad question, because really it's a difficult question. It's going to require every ounce of what we've talked about so far. But really, if you can do this kind of question, you can do pretty much any question. OK, um, so I am going to leave you to it. But I am going to get, give you a hint to kick things off. And my hint is start by prime factoring everything. Okay, I will see you in five minutes. Good luck.
All right, so that is time. Um, I'm going to use a really unconventional technique to prime factor. Um, so basically, uh, already by looking at the question, I know we're going to have an assortment of twos and fives, right? For example, 125, we've seen, we've seen this number before. It's uh, 5 cubed. Uh, 16 is actually 2 to the power of 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into twos, fives, and uh, other. Okay, um, and we're going to see how everything kind of transpires into its respective category when we do this. Okay, so uh, the other category is going to be used right away, actually, because not, uh, 45 is equal to uh, 9 times 5. So that's 1, 5. So I'm going to put 5 to the power of 1. And we're going to put in the other um, just uh, 9, right? So that's done. Uh, four, let's switch up the color again. Let's use this uh, red color. Uh, four is two squared. That is done. Um, I'm going to stop underlining. I'm just going to check things off. Let's go with the blue now. Um, for 125, as I said, that is five to the power of three. So we've got that there. Um, let's go back to the green for 45. Um, so again, we have another 45. Uh, which is, of course, um, 9 times 5. Um, so we're going to put a 5 here again, but we're also going to put another 9 here. Right? Takes care of that. Uh, 16, as I said, that's 2 to the power of 4. So far, everything's multiplying. Everything's good to go. Um, and there's nothing really we need to account for. Uh, however, the divide by 27 is actually um, dividing by uh, numbers, right? So we need to we need to factor that in. Uh, so actually, this is actually divide by 3 cubed. Um, so instead of putting 9 times 9, I'm going to put 3 squared times 3 squared. So just bear with me while I change that quickly. So 3 squared times 3 squared uh, divide by 3 cubed. That now actually covers 27. Uh, for some reason, I did 27 in red ink as well, so we're just going to go with that. Um, let's shift over to blue for the 8, uh, which we know is times 2 cubed. 8's done. 51 we've actually done before today. That is 17 times 3. Um, so both of those will go in the other category. Um, let's go again with the green. So we have uh, times 3 times 17. Boom. Um, so that took care of itself. Uh, 22, uh, once again, we're going to use that other category as well. Uh, that is equal to times 2 times 11. That's done. Uh, 55, let's switch to the blue color, uh, is times 5. We're going to get one in that 5 box finally. And we're also going to be dividing by 11. Sorry, this is a divide by 5. Right, um, so that's there. Uh, I'm going to erase all these powers of 1. I think they'll just get in the way at the end. Okay, um, divide by 36. So again, we are dividing. Let's switch to the red color here. Um, so we will be now dividing by 36 is 9 times 4. Uh, so that's 3 squared times 2 squared. We have two of each of those. So we have divide by 2 squared here. And we have a divide by 3 squared here. Right. Uh, that is divided by 36 um, times 125. So if we go towards this category here, we have another times 5 to the power of 3. Cool, cool. And divide by 34. Uh, 34 is equal to 17 times 2. So we have, let's switch back to the green here. We've got divide by 17 in the other category. And in the 2 category, we're also going to be dividing by 2. So everything's basically sorted into this so-called prime factorization, now allowing us to actually cross things off and finally figure out what the values are for each one. Um, so let's go ahead and do that quickly. So for two, um, we have a lot of twos, actually. So these two can just cross off uh, because we're times two and divide by two. But otherwise, we have two plus four, which is six, uh, six, seven, eight. Uh, and then we have here, we have 9, 10, 11. So we have 11 twos, 
right? Let's check that again. Four, um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to eleven. Yep. Uh, for fives, we have this five and this five can cancel out. But otherwise, we have five. Um, we have six plus one is seven fives. And in the other category, uh, this divide by 17, this divide by 17 cancel. This divide by, multiply by 11 and divide by 11, they cancel as well. Um, and then we have three squared times three, which is three cubed. Divide by this three cubed, which also cancels. And then we have times three squared divide by three squared, which also cancels. So we have nothing left here. Nothing. Sad face. Okay, so we have 11 twos. Uh, and seven fives, which gives us a final value of um, basically two um, squared, right? So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're just gonna get rid of four of these, right? So we have uh, five of these. Uh, uh, we have uh, seven of these. We have five seven of these fives waiting for us. We have eleven of these twos waiting for us. Um, I'm just gonna make sure I didn't forget anything here. Uh, oh, I did. I forgot one pair. Of, so there's two squared here and divide by two squared right there. So actually, we only have seven twos. Right? My mistake. I just forgot that pair right here. Uh, so we have seven twos times seven fives times nothing, which gives us two to the power of seven times five to the power of seven, which is one with seven zeros. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven which is a total sum of 10 million. And this is actually our final answer. That is the correct final answer. And I'm just going to show you, I did this question earlier, and I also got uh, that as my final answer. So here you can see I've entered everything in. Um, let me try and pull it up one more time. And there you go. That's the 10 million I got earlier and the 10 million we just calculated today. So as long as you prime factor everything and you cross things off that are the same, uh, you too should know exactly what to do uh, in the future. Okay. And this slide has come up erroneously in the past, but we are actually finally done. Um, we're good to go. That's it for this video and see you in our next video, which will probably be our last video. Take care.